tap and check, and then we'll just, hey, everyone, how's it going? Um, welcome to the uh, Weekend Projects Hangout on Air, powered by Radio Shack. Uh, today we'll be talking about the Optical Tremolo Project, a uh, great weekend project we have parts at Radio Shack. But today I'm joined by Sean Michael Reagan, technical editor for Make. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Good, Nick, how are you doing? Doing well, thanks. And also a uh, avid Make reader, Chuck, who's actually built and customized his own Optical Tremolo. How's it going, Chuck? Good, good to be here. Cool. So, um, Sean, how about you kind of explain the story of the uh, the optical tremolo? I hear it was basically uh, it came up in a Make magazine, Volume 15, as sort of like a theory. Uh, wasn't really a project that was proposed, but sort of like a, a thought. And then uh, you kind of ran with the idea. And um, can you explain about how Charles Platt kind of uh, inspired the idea to begin with? Uh, absolutely. So I. Uh so first, this is this is my volume 16. Can you see it there? Yeah. And it, we had a, had a the DIY musical instruments theme for that one. I was not uh, I'm not on staff at that time, but I was writing for the blog. This is one of my favorite issues actually. And Charles Platt, of course, is one of our regular electronics contributors. And this is the article that he ran called Stomp Stomp Box Basic. And let me see if I can find the yeah there it is the money shot there. It's uh. This is where this is where this is where Charles proposes but does not actually implement or suggest a circuit design for uh, uh, exactly what I ended up building, which is uh, a guitar or musical instrument effects pedal that's modulated optically. You can see in the diagram here. Uh, there's a wheel. There's an encoder wheel that spins, uh, and it has opaque portions and transparent portions, and a light shines through. And when it's opaque, when the wheel spins by, and there's an opaque region. The light shines through onto a photoresistor, and that uh, lowers the resistance of the photoresistor and shorts the audio signal to ground, which makes it quiet. So when it's clear, it's quiet, right? So this was just a proposed idea that Charles talked about here. He was talking about a lot of classic uh, DIY tremolo and pedal effect circuit, and this was just kind of one he dropped in as a bonus. And uh, our former editorial director, Gareth, came to me last year uh, and asked if I could turn it you know, into a real thing for our 2013 Radio Shack campaign, and it is. And uh, we did eventually publish it in uh, Make Volume 34 here. So quite quite a while after Charles kind of first posed the idea, yeah. We did, yes. Several, yeah. several years, actually. And uh, it's too bad Charles couldn't be with us here today. Yeah. He, he, would have, he would have a lot of interesting things to say about the way that I built this. And, yeah, I mean, he's kind of like the, one of the Make Electronics gurus. He's got quite a few books out. Um, I mean, comes to my mind is the Make Electronics book, and then he's also got a new encyclopedia out for electronic components, uh, one of, like, three volumes, and it's actually a great read for, like, if you're experienced or not. Um, but I was also going to ask, and maybe can throw this to Chuck, what, I'm not very familiar with, with the tremolo and really what it does. Um, I have no musical talents, and I do not play instruments, so... Uh, how does this come into effect? Like, why would you want to use a tremolo to begin with? Well, it adds a, it adds a dimension. It kind of gives that shimmer. So, um, you know, it, it's a lot of like you know your traditional uh, Les Paul used tremolo effects, you know, and um, to be able to do it in a way that you have control over, you know, a lot of the traditional tremolo is just that wah 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 wah. Where with this, you can you can change the pattern. You can have a lot more control over it. And it Everyone I've showed it to really flips on it. Guitar players are really enthusiastic on it, and I actually have one. I'm building somebody for Christmas. Um, okay. Yeah, people like that control aspect. You know? Yeah. And so just to be just to be sort of you know uh, technically uh, uh, compulsive about it, right? Tremolo really means it means a, a, a variation in volume, right? So okay, you, yeah. have, you have a constant level signal and. Uh, when you're modulating the volume up and down in a regular way, that's tremolo. There are lots of different possible effects, so you have to sort of be precise about your tremolo. Yeah. yeah. So, Sean, do you have an example for us that you could mm -hmm. uh, you could play? I do. Before we show Chuck's kind of modified version, I, do, I will. I will, I will not. Sub I will not subject you to very much of my guitar playing, but I do have a, uh, an example here. Let's see. First off, let's start with the box. You can see the box, right? Got the box. Okay. So this is the switch, and the first thing we do is we turn on the light, which we need because it's an optical process, and this wheel goes around. Okay. I don't know if you can see. I have another encoder wheel as an example. You'll probably see it uh, here. A little up. Oh, up, up, up. There, sorry. There. there you go. Nice. You can see it, right? That's like what's, what's on here. And it goes around, uh, and that modulates the signal. So let me turn it on. 
and adjust it the speed that I want. Okay. And hopefully you can hear this through my headset mic. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. You can change the speed. And you can speed it up until it's almost a buzz. And then, Sean, that effect is just one disc. You can you can actually customize discs yourself. Uh, we provide uh, some instructions, and then you can also just start uh, kind of changing the the black and white patterns on sort of like the transparent discs. Is that right? That's right. right. That's right. Now this, and they're just on there. They're just on there with Velcro. Okay. You can see. So, and that that one you just heard was just it's just like binary, right? It's like a square wave. Like one half is black. I don't know if you see that or not. One half is black. One half is clear. So it's just like a chopper, straight up and down. Okay. We uh, included several others, like like this one that I already showed, that has like a kind of a gradual crescent moon fade. This one actually, this one you can't tell the difference, but this one actually encodes the SOS, the Morse code for for, for SOS. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. But you you can't you, you can't hear it, but I thought it was a cool cool sort of gimmick. Interestingly, the uh, uh, you know this was built for our Radio Shack campaign in 2013, and. Uh, uh, I think Radio Shack's going to let us go back and do version 2.0 for 24, which I'm pretty excited about. Very cool. Because you know, once you once you build a thing, uh, you always want to make it better the next time around. Oh. Yeah, and I mean that's a great segue into kind of what Chuck. Uh, Chuck, can you show us your optical tremolo and kind of talk about how you modified it? Um, we're actually getting a couple questions from some viewers as to how you could uh, turn it into a stomp box, which in your video on um, Vimeo you kind of talked about. So maybe at the end kind of mention that as well, the, the next stage of its evolution. All right, yeah, this is my version. And I used a heavier box. This is a electronic junction box from Home Depot. Unfortunately, I got mine to set it up today, and it's not working. So that's what happens. That's how it works um, my demo. Oh, where's my, where's my sad trombone noise? I, I can't I know. Right now. Yeah, yeah. It's Thank you. It's Murphy's Law. It's yeah, always yeah, yeah. Wrong when you're ready to show somebody. Yep. I use the hub from an old Discman CD player. Um, this allows me to use the blank discs. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll, I'm sorry, all my audio just died here. Um, I use the blank discs from the end of the CD spindle. Okay. And they slot right in. I can do the pattern in paper, tape, whatever. And this allows you to switch out quickly, try a bunch of different stuff. And it's a pretty ubiquitous material that otherwise ends up in the trash. And that's... A big thing with me is recycling, so um, it seemed like the next logical step was if you have something that you could easily switch out, and also I can eliminate the reverse by flipping it over. So. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. You know, I don't have to have a reverse gear. I can just boom physically. Good analog solution to an electronics problem, right? Yeah, you yeah. don't have to have the uh, DPDT switch. I'll tell you a little secret, yeah. which is that I, I I went into Radio Shack and I really liked the way this switch looked. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which is the reason the project? One of the reasons the project. And I was like, oh, you can run both ways, and we'll sell that as a feature. But I like the right the center yeah. off and yeah. the, the the fantastic like red panel that it has. Yeah. And on that same point, that's you know I like I really like the retro knobs for the way they look. So I, I end up anybody with a broken mixing desk or anything ends up on my porch and it nice. gets taken apart and <laughs> knobs, pots, everything. I share that obsession with old knobs. Like, I have a huge drawer full of... I, I tear them off of anything I can find. Yeah. Anything you buy commercially today just isn't quite the same. Another mod I made on mine was the light. Um, this is a Romex um, copper home wiring inside, just one strand. And okay. it's a piece of rope and parts from pins. So it's kind of... um. I've, I've controlled other synthesizers and noisemakers and stuff with a similar thing with this flexible arm. And um, there again, it's recycling. It's a bunch of junk that was laying around the shop anyway rather than going and spending money. <laughs> That's very cool. I'd actually thought about using the CD's spindle material in a future build. That's really interesting. Yeah, they snap in right away, and you know you have like that solid connection, whereas uh, the project right now at least uses like the Velcro in the center. And then That's you right. can't, uh, like Chuck was saying, you can't rotate it. You can't flip over the CD. Um, 
that same way. Yeah, that's extremely wow. clever. I may have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to steal that one from you. With due credit, of course. So. And the the CD also gives it better balance at a higher speed. It's gonna turn nicer. Um, so I, I the first the first one I experimented with, I just used a disc of regular transparency, and it was kind of floppy. Mm -hmm. Noisy a bit. Mm -hmm. So this kind of cleans up the design all around. And I really like the enclosure box. I mean, there's tons of space to modify, and it's really robust, you know? Um, I've actually thought a couple times about going to the hardware store and getting kind of like one of those, like, it's almost like a waterproof box, isn't it? It's for, like, irrigation or, like, electronics, like, conduit? It's for, it's for electronics outside, and it's called okay. a wet box. And, um, yeah, it's got a, open it up here, and you see it's got a heavy neoprene gasket on the inside. Yeah, yeah. And it screws, the, the lid screws on tight. So, yeah, for... Electronics enclosures, they're, they're nice and heavy duty. They're a little expensive, but for the for the robustness of it, it it's worth it in applications, you know. Yeah, I used one of those for a, um, a sous vide controller, like a water bath temperature oh, yeah. controller build yeah. once. Yeah. I love that case. And so, Chuck, um, someone's asking, uh, let's see, how could you turn this into, like, a, a interface with a stomp pedal? Uh, I think you mentioned that in the, the video that we posted on the, the Make Scene blog um, as a future kind of modification to be able to, to adapt. Um, do you have any ideas for how you could do that? Um, with the, this being kind of a fragile thing, you know, you don't want to you don't want to put a lot of abuse on it. But I think a breakout switch, a breakout foot switch that you can control it with, would would definitely be nice. And also a foot pedal. Um, if you could hook it up like a wah pedal, where you could actually control your speed and the rate of rotation with one foot, you know, while you're playing, you get a whole new range of um, possibilities out of the instrument. And this is a good, this is a good launching off project. Um, I have another unit that I unfortunately don't have with me right now that um, I build analog synth circuits and I was trying to figure out ways to make them interact and change over time and kind of random music. So I built something, instead of using a fast motor, I use a clock motor and a round piece of x-ray film, and as it rotates slowly, it was changing different parameters of the synth circuit, um, pitch, uh -huh. modification, all that. And it was, it was, it's the seed of something that's going to be really interesting one day. It's just this, you know, if, if they're turning at different speeds, you've always got different combinations of tone, mm -hmm. speed, rhythms, you know, it, it's a generative music, basically. And it all came, it all kind of evolved from this project, you know. It's a similar idea of the LED and the photoresistor with a transparency rotating, except this was more of organic changes of the X-ray film. So you know, my ribs sound really cool. I bet they do. You know what? I when I first saw you, I thought I bet the ribs sound great. <laughs> <laughs> so then another question we're getting is, can you? Uh, can you use this, the optical tremolo, with, with just a guitar? Can you adapt this? Someone's asking for a violin. I mean, it, or is it just for a single instrument, just the guitar itself? Can you no, it, I mean, it's got, it's got quarter-inch, you know, it's got quarter-inch uh, mono audio jacks on both sides, in and out. So anything, it's pretty much any, any uh, audio signal you put in one side, you can modulate with this and get out the other. So as long as you have an input coming into the system, it just modulates that, that output. Yeah, you could, you, you could literally use it on anything. Yeah. Cool. How about when they're... Uh, God, we're getting a bunch of great questions, actually. Um, how about for... Chuck, you mentioned also that the, the less opaque color on the disc, does that affect the sound or the, the effect that you're getting? Um, I saw you were using, I believe it was, tape that you use for fixing, like, a tail light, and it had a certain red opaque color to it. It wasn't quite... Yeah, that one. How, how does that kind of... Uh... It's interesting because it kind of fades it in a step. I also did this one, which is spray paint and um, aluminum tape here. So it's got a oh. serious block, and then it kind of fades in with the spray paint as it rotates. I don't know if you can see that with my black shirt. But, yeah, as you rotate yeah, totally. it, it fades in and out. And um, I think I would combine this with actually printing on transparency, and you can get a lot of really intricate effects if you have the, the control of actually printing a transparency and then adhering it to these blank discs from the CD spindle. Yeah, I'm hopeful that if we get to redesign uh, this project for 2014 that we can design it to work off reflected rather than transmitted light. So, for instance, you could just print these instead of on a clear substrate, you could print them just on white, you know, and the circuit would operate from the light that was bounced off the white versus the light that was bounced off the black. 
like kind of like the principle of a line following robot, you know. If you made it like a mirror ball, you'd get like a nice chaotic, you know. That would be really cool. That would yeah. be really cool. I when I was when I was when I published this project, I thought, well, it's cool, but the transparencies are kind of the the bottleneck. They're not really easy to find. You know, it would be cool if people could just print on paper. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then, Sean, these are some of the, here's a screenshot, at least, of some of the optical tremolo, kind of like the disks that we kind of provided with the project. Um, can you talk any bit about sort of like the effects you'd get, or is it just you have to experiment with whatever the input sound is? Or, or the, can you kind of predict what's going to happen based upon the pattern? Oh, since it's just a straight-up amplitude modulation, you can pretty much, you know, if you think about how they're going to turn, you can imagine how they would sound. Uh, in fact... I'm hopeful in the second version of this box we're going to put a, a, a pulse width modulation motor, a proper motor speed controller in it so that you can really get down to the low speeds you need yeah. to uh, appreciate the more complex effects. Right now, you kind of get like, you can tell that it's going up and down, but if you start to get more nuanced, like with the SOS thing that I tried, like you really can't make it run slow enough uh, to really appreciate that effect. So the gradient one sounds pretty cool. You can tell that one, but uh, a lot of the rest of it is just, you know, you can sort of tell up and down. There and Chuck, have you? I know in your video you also mentioned kind of the PWM idea. Have you gotten any farther with that? Or sounds like you guys are talking about the same same kind of like 2.0 version already. Yeah, totally. For 2.0, for 2.0, I want it to run. I want you to be able to use plain paper discs. I want to include a PWM speed controller, and I want it to run in nine volts because the whole like universe of yeah. guitar effect pedals runs at nine volts. So. Yeah, and um, I, I, there's definitely the pulse width modulator um, would make the whole thing because, like he says, to slow it down, it also gives you a um, a higher resolution. So the slower it's going, the more change you can affect, the more detail you get. Um, you can get a lot. It's kind of hard to explain, but figure like you know this turns one time. That's like the faster it turns, the less the less detail you can get. The the, the shorter time it takes in the course of whatever. And there again, I'm thinking more in terms of long-term affecting synthesizers, affecting generative music, you know. So to be able to slow something like this down quite a bit gives you a whole nother, another use. Yeah, and yeah. the, the trade-off, of course, is that if you want to build this from scratch and you want to include a proper motor speed controller, it's more complicated to build. Yeah. And the reason, the reason this device runs at 3 volts is because you can get away with the, the sort of cheap-ass speed controller that I included, which is just the pot, yeah, a series, a series pot, right? If you tried to do that at 9 volts, like, your, your potentiometer would melt when you turned it down right. really slow because it'd be absorbing all this heat trying to slow it down. So look out for version 2.0. <laughs> so I, I was actually curious. I, the video I just watched before the Hangout, actually, it's really detailed and really awesome. Um, I was just curious, Sean... When you're picking the parts, um, obviously you can get them all at Radio Shack and the enclosure. Um, you're not going to go the, the crazy robust way that Chuck did, but what is the difference between the rheostat, which looks just like the potentiometer? Um, That's a good question, and you, you you put me on the spot. I'm not sure I can tell you off the top of my head. Oh, no. <laughs> so I, I want to say one of them, so if I, if I remember correctly, uh, one of these is a lot more resistant than the other, and the tapers may be different, but it's been a while since I brushed up on it, what exactly a rheostat was versus what exactly a potentiometer was. They're they're real similar. So if anybody in the audience wants to, to chastise me with the proper answer, I don't know either. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't I don't remember off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. You know, you can feel it when you turn it. Like um, the inside of the rheostat feels like it's a winding almost, whereas you know a pod is just kind of smooth. Is that how it works? Like a rheostat? Maybe that's it. A rheostat has a coil, whereas a pot, a pot has a slider. A pot has a slider. Interesting. You know? yeah. yeah, maybe so. That may be it, but I would have to look it up to know for sure. I'm sorry. But I can attest to them getting hot. I've actually melted things, hooking them up wrong with rheostats. So. Yeah. yeah. So watch out when you're building the circuit. Awesome. Yes. Well, if you, I mean, if you run it at 3 volts, you're probably, gonna, you're probably not going to melt much of anything. But. I was at higher yeah. voltage. Yeah. But they heat up. So on that note, uh, Chuck, thank you so much for joining us for the, the Weekend Project's uh, Hangout on Air. Uh, Sean, thank you again. Oh, it's always um, a pleasure. We'll be having the next one next week, so, so be sure to tune in uh, for the Weekend Project's Hangout on Air, powered by Radio Shack. And uh, please check out the project page. It's an awesome video for the details. And uh, if you know the answer to that Rheostat question, feel free to post it and uh, let us know. Yeah, All right, thanks, everyone. Have a, a great weekend. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Sean. Right on.